I didn't understand why I have primary custody and he lives with me full time, why I'm the one paying 200 and some dollars a month in child support. Carolyn DeYoung and Brandon Patterson, both are here via Zoom. And this is the date and time set for hearing in this matter. Matter has been set for a support review. Recommendation was mailed out by a friend of the court and an objection was filed uh, by Mr. Patterson. Uh, I would note Ms. Smulders is here. Ms. Smulders, who do you represent? I represent Brandon Patterson. All right, very well. Um, and uh, both parties are present and Ms. Heaven. Ms. Heaven, uh, do you have an update or uh, a, a result of the recommendation or uh, the review? Currently, um, Mr. Patterson is paying $12 a month for medical support. Um, the recommendation would have um, Mr. Patterson paying $199 child support, ordinary medical $13 for a total of $212 a month. All right. And uh, Ms. Smulders, your client objected to that recommendation? Correct. I believe it was just because that the um, number of overnights were inaccurate. Is that correct, Brandon? I know I had sent out an email and I hadn't received a response. Um, I wanted you to double check the the overnights. Um, I did not get that email, um, but I objected because I didn't understand why I have primary custody and he lives with me full time, why I'm the one paying 200 and some dollars a month in child support. Well, my understanding was there was 100 overnights if that was correct on, on 100 and, 121 as of april 19th well, 23 that's the day that lets you go him go back with you and we agreed to no child support and for Devin to be able to come here he's been here twice one of the two times i sent him home with a hundred dollars i have multiple messages i can show you i just talked to him on mother's day offering anything he wants uh, second time I, he came up here to lunch, you had you were blowing his phone up saying he was going 72 by his tracker app, and he's trying to explain he was on the highway. So then we wrapped up lunch, and he said, I got to go. I had invited him to do something with us one time where we'd stay at the hotel overnight and have fun, and he was like, eh, I don't know if he would let me. Um, his sister, Emily, my daughter, has asked him, brother, I want to see you, and he said, I don't know, I got to ask. Our agreement in me letting him go back with you is that Devin is allowed. I am his mother. Okay. He loves me. I love him. I respect your relationship with him and I don't butt in with that as long as you treat him right. We're both grown. I mean, Devin's not a toy. And that's a little I twisted her story, but that's okay. You, oh, well, whatever. Devin. All right. Well, hold on, both of you. Hold on. Let, well, let, he didn't pay hold me on, Hold on. Ma your ma Devin is here. Ma'am. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. Ms. Evan, how many overnights did you use in the calculation? Um, Mr. Patterson didn't include any overnights in his questionnaire. So I went to the order that ordered front of the court to review. And I used 100 because it said parenting time shall be as the parties agree. But in the event they do not, the defendant shall have parenting time according to the Nuevo County reasonable parenting time policy as it relates to non-custodial parents. All right. So... Uh, there are 365 overnights in a year, as we all know, sometimes 366. Uh, so 100 was used. That's well less than half. Sir, are you indicating now that you have more than 100 overnights per year with uh, the child in question? Uh, no, I've never said that. I have not said that he can't stay there. No, 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 no. Just... That's, not, that's not my question. My question was, do you have more than 100? You said you had the child the majority of the time when you first spoke. So that would be at least oh. 182 or more to have the child the majority of the time. So what is your assessment of the number of overnights that you have if, in fact, you have more than 100 or you have primary physical custody? Uh, I do have primary physical custody, and I have had him since the since april 19th i allowed him to exclusively go. hold on ma'am i'll get to you in a minute sorry. sorry sir you've had him exclusively since that time he stayed with you every night or what yes carolyn has had no overnights yet but i have not said that he cannot stay there if he does not choose which if he just he can stay there if he wants to but i i'm i haven't made him go there 
All right. So uh, when you filled out the paperwork for the review, why didn't you put in there that you have all the overnights or, or a majority of the overnights? I did. I, I we, put, I, I have said primary you didn't fill custody. It out. We Ms. have, said we you didn't, have ma the ma 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 Just a minute. Ma'am, I'm going to ask you the same questions in a minute. Just hold tight. We got a process here. I got to... I got to get through this my way. Ms. Evan, how many overnight, you used 100 overnights and Mr. Patterson said he filled in the overnights, but in fact, he did not. He did I must not. have missed something. In that section, he puts the child's name that he claims him on taxes. The annual number of overnights was blank. He indicates child lives with dad, but that doesn't tell me overnights. And the order indicates that they have joint legal custody and physical custody. So. Okay. I do okay. <laughs> but the default is if they don't agree that he would see dad 100 overnights or 102 because Correct. that would be reasonable parenting time. All Correct. right. But sir, you've had him exclusively since April. So that's what, a month, a month or so. Well, how yes. often have you had him over the last year? Uh, she had full physical custody and custodial for the last year. All right, but you've had the last month. I've I just started back with them on April April nineteenth. All right. So, and how old is he? Seventeen. Seventeen. So you're pretty much letting him stay or go as he pleases. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. If he he wants every time he's wanted to go up there and visit, he's gone up and visited, and he has not asked me to stay the night up there. All right. He sleeps at your house. Yes. All right. His um, license is also on our, our house as well. Yeah, well, it's got to be one or the other. Um, so, uh, ma'am, what's your assessment on the number of overnights that the child has spent with Mr. Patterson in the last, well, let's start with the month. Um, he has stayed with him the last month. Okay. Yes. How about, how about the last year then? How about the last I year? I think our miscommunication between Mr. Patterson and I is that we had already been through attorney, been through the court, basically agreed to have custody. Devin can come here, go there. You know, let's, let's, were we finally to that point where, and there shouldn't have been any disagreement. We both got this. I read the child support paper that it was coming after me and, and we had already had a court hearing for custody and all that. Everything's good and great. We agree. And we just had to basically me pay the medical like he had been doing because he paid me no child support the year Devin was here. So I think we're both a little thrown off by this, and I, I agree to those terms that we had previously I, agreed to before this meeting. All right. I think where it tipped was is that Ms. Heaven didn't have any overnights to go on. Okay. And the order says if you agree, fine. Um, but if you don't agree, then it's according to the reasonable parenting time policy, which it says defendant would have reasonable parenting time policy, which is 100 or 102, depending on how you count them. And that's what she used. That was all she had to go on because she had nothing else. Okay. I never asked for child support. I just didn't well, understand why I was supposed to pay for two hundred dollars of it. That's yeah. all I didn't understand. Well, because that order, that order that uh, that order that changed the parenting time that was done just in February said the matter should be referred to the friend of the court to review. So that's why that's what triggered it. Yeah. Same and that's order. What that's what the judge had said. And it was, it was just the medical. Cause I had asked her, I said, he didn't pay me any child support the last year. And he verbally, and I have it on a piece of paper signed by him somewhere that if I allow him to go back, no child support and I'll pay the medical just like he did. All so, right. Well, your if, honor, if, if, if what a child support reviewed, it shouldn't have been in there, I guess, but all right, Ms. Mulder. What? I was going to say, if, if, if it's allowed, I don't know about state assistance and some other requirements. What from what I'm hearing is both parties are agreeable to zero support at this time. I don't know if if a recalculation is technically necessary or if they can stip stipulate on on the record to that. Uh, Ms. Evan, is there? There, a... is, there is Medicaid. Okay. With with stepmom and food with uh, mom. Uh, I think she should have been off there when he moved out. I reported it. So in, it's in that six. So it's probably just got to, and it's nothing outrageous. I work, my husband works. It was really just that COVID school money. And I'd got that straightened out. And then I get, we get a little bit, but his nothing major. Um, it should be coming off there. 
Excuse me just a moment. So, sir, you're telling the court that you're doing all this child needs for support, and yet you're depending on the government and taxpayers to pay your child's insurance. Is that right? And, and food's not assignable, so but the Medicaid is. Yeah, and I have no problem doing that. And Devin knows that if he needs anything, I'm here for him. So the, the recommendation, though, is for the party who has the child on Medicaid to be the payer. So it wouldn't go to the state anyway, if that was the case. Correct. Right? There would have to be. Yeah, you're, you're right. I'm well, willing to pay for the Medicaid. It's not. We would have to get a, um, a trio set up with DHHS because it's a stepmom that's the guarantee. But yeah. All right. Uh, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna deviate and just uh, set support for both parties at zero at this time. Um, child 17 anyway, so he'll emancipate here soon. Is he a senior or a junior in school right now? Junior. Junior. So I guess support could go for another year if he's doing all right in school. But and I'm um, it's not like I'm not gonna buy school clothes and all that goodies. No, I get that. I ask him, uh, sir, is, sir, is it your intent to keep him on Medicaid at this point? Uh, this, we're just going to leave it how it was, but I mean, we buy him everything school-wise he needed, and we actually didn't get a lot, st a lot of stuff back when he moved back, but Medicaid that's here nor pay. there. Medicaid doesn't pay for school stuff. I asked about Medicaid. Is it your intent to keep him on Medicaid? Do either of you have health insurance available at work that he could be placed on? Yes, uh, I do. Medicaid right now. Oh, I, know, I know that. Ma'am, you do? Yes, I do, if if necessary. But with Medicaid, I do it with my daughter. I pay them $30 a month. It's cheaper that way. I decline the insurance at work because you can pick a plan through Medicaid instead of $30 a week out of my check for some outrageous insurance plan with co-pays and that. You can pick these plans through the Michigan.gov and I pay $30 for Emily a month for my daughter. So, so I'm sure that Something, if needed like that for Devin, I could work out with a DHS worker, whatever medical needs. All Brandon has to do is communicate with me. Yeah, so if it's available through your employer for a reasonable cost, which is defined by law as 6% of your gross income or less, you're supposed to do it that way. Okay, well, I can talk to my HR lady, and if that's what I have to do for him, it's, it's what I have to do. All right, I'll set a zero at this point. Why don't you do that? Why don't you see if you can get the child on your uh, on health insurance through work? Okay. Uh, if it's available for 6% or less, then you should do that. If not, and the child remains on Medicaid, then uh, if it comes back to my attention, I may have you pay the ordinary medical at that point. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. Thank you, Sally, Your Honor. I've asked you a few times, do you have proof of the Medicaid? I mean, I'm paying for that. I've never seen the Medicaid card or any proof that they actually have health insurance or dental. What? 